model on the public private partnership particularly in the state of Rajasthan and uh, they are already uh, initiated the discussions with the government of Rajasthan regarding the same. I would request Mr. Ghosh to speak on this issue on implementation of public private partnership and uh, behind this. Mom loves his omelette. He didn't get his omelette during the lunch. That was pretty clear. <laughs> you should have put that in comment. You know. I have one every day. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's covered everything. I mean, what 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 one needs to know about PPP and what is happening within this country? I think he's covered everything. Uh, I will try to sort of approach this whole topic slightly differently and move from practical, on-ground, grassroots level, the kind of challenges that we face. I think the biggest challenge that we face is, you know, all this distrust and all those words that have been used are all true. At the end of the day, PPPs have worked in these countries, many, many, maybe very few of them. But if you really go into the details of those PPPs, what has really caused that success is the presence of an individual or a leadership. The government or the public as a system has not really contributed so far to the success of PPP in these countries. And that is the reason the numbers are still very, very few. It's easy to look at the PPP success in uh, highway projects. There is a clear revenue benefit, there is a clear business model and therefore the private sector and the public, both, it's a win-win kind of a relationship. When it actually comes to the health sector, the win-win is a, is, a, is a very distant possibility. And that is where the relationship never works well. So, I think the two things that uh, Mark talked about as uh, something which is a requirement, one is the innovation. The other is the social enterprises, and I would like to harp on these things in my presentation. So I am I'm going to sort of look at these four P's in the healthcare more from the, the context in which we operate in this country. Okay, so what do you do? Just press this. Right. Okay. I don't know if you can read it or not. These are all known stuff, so you don't need to necessarily read it basically talks about the problems or the challenges that we face in our country when it comes to the health care. Poor health indica uh, indicators. First of all, if you look at the rural health care, you know, 70% population live in rural, 25% you know, of the doctors live in you know, service, service uh, rural. If you look at the 40% of the rural uh, sort of health practitioners, they don't even have a degree. They don't even have any kind of, you know, some of them may not have passed the school. So that's the kind of people who are handling uh, the healthcare in the rural areas. If you look at the reproductive uh, maternal child health, again, it's a very known story that you know so many are dying, whether it's the mother, whether it's the baby, and for very, very simple reasons that they are dying, and it's been going on for the last 60 years. If you look at the disease burden, now on top of that, like you know, so far we were always talking about family planning and RF and CH and all these things. Now suddenly we are talking about non-communicable diseases. As the age of the population, Indian population, is increasing, the disease profile is going to change and this going to be much more expensive and therefore the burden will be even higher. So there's no end to this problem. And then finally, even after 60 years, when you look at the doctor to patient ratio, the bed ratio, everything is not working in favor. It's, it's, it doesn't really make sense to compare with US and Brazil and stuff like that, but we keep doing that. I don't know what fun we get by comparing because we are much below the, the basic norm that one has set. So having said that, I mean, this, this, this is what is the biggest problem that, you know, uh, every time that we don't prevent, or a rural Indian doesn't prevent or take any kind of precautionary measure, uh, and they finally fail, fall, fall sick and then they go for the treatment, and once they get into the treatment, they go below the poverty line. And it's very difficult for them to come back. And that's the reality. However, at the same time, 
this country is full of like surprises and full of positives as well. And that's why we still like, you know, very hopeful always. And each, every sector. I mean, three matches the Indian team loses, we still know that, you know, the next five matches, if there's something will happen, God or some, somebody will come and do something. Healthcare also the same thing happens. So you see like, you know, the, the policy environment changes. So every time we look at that, we say, oh, great stuff happening. Why not? <laughs> you look at the health spending, suddenly there is a there is a proposal that you know from one point to whatever two percent it will go up to six percent. Great news. When it will happen, we don't know. Third is like the donors have been pumping in money for years and big amounts of money. I worked on a project way back which started in 1994 or 92, which is called SIFSA. Two hundred million dollar worth of project for 20 years. Somebody had the Guts to plan for 20 years. I mean, I can't even plan for three years, four years, five years. 20 years, family planning, the face of family planning would have changed with $200 million. Nothing happened, you know. Uh, but there is enough money available. And it's not just the donors, the traditional donors like the USA or the different or the KW and so on and so forth. It's now the impact investors, the Indian CSRs. This is not more money than what it used to be 10 years back. So there's no dearth of money. Then there is, you know, this whole emergence of uh, social enterprises. There are lots of these for-profit who are trying to create a balance between the impact, the social impact, and the profitability. They're ready to operate at a much lower profitability level and to, to help them come up, uh, you know, with different kinds of strategies and implement those more successfully. You have incubators, you have professional accelerators available now. These were not there. Five ten years back, and then you know, there's a high impact, large scale innovation like you know, uh, Narana Health, uh, Arvind, I Care, Batsalya, Swasth India. You know, there are several examples one can cite, and there's good enough evidence to believe that it is possible. It is, it can be done. But what is it lacking that because of which we can't see scale, the numbers, the replications, is something that we are still toying with. We still sort of groping in dark. So the need is very clear. We need a responsive healthcare innovation ecosystem. The problems are very old and we have tried. Everything in this country has been tried. If you look at it, it's a hotbed of pilots. The number of pilots and the number of you know, uh, centers of excellence and the number of like archives that have happened in this country, if anybody takes a note of that, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. But none of the successes have been scaled up or if at all, very few have been scaled up. When you talk about the healthcare scale up, innovation scale up, you have very few like and I have, you can talk about I, every presentation you listen, every conference, every forum that you visit, you just hear the same names coming back again and again. But we don't hear those new names. What's the reason? We need more innovations to be scaled up. It is not new ideas just you know being thrown at. We have, we have lots of ideas. Those ideas have gone through proof of concept. But we need to now pick them up and we need to really scale them up. For which we require money, we require uh, management capacity, we need business capacity, we need different kinds of incubators, we need different kind of accelerators. But then, at the end of it, there is an ecosystem that needs to be built so that these innovators, who are largely great idea guys, but not necessarily great business guys, they're not the business, you know, business, the management savvy kind of people, but they have brilliant ideas. Yesterday I was in Calcutta attending a confederation of Indian Industries healthcare meet for the Eastern Zone. This guy walked up to me from Hyderabad and he has come up with a vending machine which has two compartments. In one compartment you stand and you can get your blood test and all, all those checkups done instantly. The reports get to the doctor. And the e-prescription comes from the other counter, and you just scan that uh, prescription, uh, just like an ATM machine screen, and what you get is the medicines being doled out from the machine. And he actually demonstrated that. And the doctor was sitting in Hyderabad. He set it up in Calcutta and did it. But this is possible. I was shocked that this somebody has done it. And we keep talking about that, you know, in rural there's no pharmacy, there's no doctor, there's nothing. Who's going to scale this up? Who's going to support this? Somebody has to own this. Somebody has to really believe in it to take this up. I asked that guy, I said, 
billion. Who, where are you going to market this? And you know what he said? Yes. Software enclaves, where just IT hubs are there, he's going to put it there. I said, are you crazy? Why are you going to do that? He said, that's where the money is, that's where the business is. Who is going to pay me in the rural areas? He's not even thinking that, you know, in those hubs, there are 6,000, 10,000 people working. Already there is Apollo Pharmacy, there is, you know, 98.4. It works. Everything is there. But he wants to go and replicate the whole thing again. Somebody has to tell him, hello, this is where the market is. This is where the unmet need is. This is the kind of support you require. This is the business plan you have. And this is how your business can grow over a period of time. And these kind of solutions can actually change the paradigm of the healthcare problem in this country. This is just one example. After coming into this company, which we, basically what we deal with is healthcare innovations. And we try to support, fund, I've come up with so many ideas from several different kinds of people. Five items passed out. No job, they're not looking for a job. They've come up with a five rupees glucometer. It costs five rupees. So I had to tell him, listen, don't charge five rupees. Nobody will buy it. Nobody will it's not credible. At least charge 50 rupees. But this guy, the ideas are there. Like if somebody has to support those and take it to the places where it is meant for. If it's an affordable glucometer, it should be sold in the urban areas. Let it be there in the villages where it is required. Just coming to slightly uh, more details, I mean, there's this new segment of what's called the inclusive business models. I mean, it's emerging. And let me just explain this to a slightly more complicated diagram. The, you know, the, the, the y-axis is basically the kind of townships, like, you know, the rural, very urban, urban. Now, largely in the first column, what you see is that the blue, which is starting from the bottom and going almost to the, you know, urban area. It's like, you know, that whole lot has been catered to by the government, and even today, it's the government which caters to the rural, the area urban largely. There is this PPP or the not-for-profit segment, you know, who work with the government in different capacities, who have been sort of, sort of come in between, which is the urban and the rural, part of the rural. You will not find them absolutely in the, in the hardest of the hard, the remotest of the remote rural areas. Because they charge some money, or they, 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 it costs, it may cost a sub subsidized, you know, sort of a you know, fee. So they take care of the lower middle class. That's their real target group. And then the third block that is, which is the urban market, which is dominated by the private players. But there is this segment, which is a very, very small and emerging segment, I would say. Who are the social enterprises? These are like Ashoka fellows. The guy he wants to think about making social impact. He comes from a village, he comes from some urban slum, and he's got this you know, little pot of money, and he wants to make a business where profit is not the primary uh, objective there. These guys are making headway. They are coming up. And there are several examples available. We uh, wish we did a study, national study, along with International Finance Corporation.